Welcome to your Construction Safety Association of Manitoba's Virtual Toolbox Talk Series. Brought to you by CSAM The Safety Conference, Canada's premier and North America's largest construction safety conference. It is very hard to find a job site in Manitoba where ladders aren't used. But are we using ladders correctly? There are different do's and don'ts, or safer practices that workers should follow when using a ladder. These will vary to some degree depending if you're using a step ladder or an extension ladder. On some finished buildings, there are fixed ladders that workers will have to access to do their tasks. This virtual toolbox talk will review and discuss some of those safe job practices that we should follow. Did you know that between 2016 and 2021, there have been 205 serious injuries, 393 lost time injuries, and 103 no time lost injuries reported to WCB for a fall from a ladder. That's a total of 701 reported injuries, averaging about 140 per year. The most serious injuries from those falls have been fractures and dislocations, with a five year total of 55,762 lost days, averaging 60 days per reported injury. And the most reported time frame for those injuries is between June and September of each year. Shoulders, knees, wrists, and ankles are the most reported body parts that are injured from a fall. However, there have also been over 40 reported brain injuries related to falling from a ladder. So let's take a closer look on how we can try to reduce these injuries and use ladders as they are intended. Come with me, let's check this out. It makes no difference if your industry is residential or commercial construction. The basic safety principles of step ladders remain the same. Inspect, open, lock, and use. The general purpose of a ladder is to allow a worker quick access to work at height where other means of getting to that workspace are not practicable. We can't get an aerial lift or a scissor lift in here, or we cannot build scaffolding. The space just doesn't allow it. Or we don't have the equipment available. So we rely on ladders to get the job done. When we inspect the ladders pre-use, there are numerous things to look for. Let's start at the bottom and work our way to the top. Each ladder should have rubber foot padding in good condition. No big chunks missing or debris that is stuck within it. Next, we look at the side rails. Make sure there are no cracks or chips that will affect the structural stability. Be sure to check all four rails. While we do this, we are also looking at the rivets for the rungs to ensure they are in good and safe condition. Then we look at the rungs. We want to ensure there are no dents, cracks, warps or twisting going on. Don't forget the top rung or the top plate that holds the front and sides together. We can't forget the stability arms. This is still part of the inspection as we need to ensure they work as intended. There should be no warps or big deviation from the side rails. If there is, these may be bent and could cause issues. So let's take a closer look. As we open the ladder, we want to ensure the arms are able to lock in place and make the ladder rigid for stability. With the ladder now open and looking good, there's one more thing to check. Does it sit level or is there a rocking motion? If it moves and rocks, this could be attributed to a few different factors. Is the floor or surface level clear of debris? Are the side rails twisted? Has the ladder been altered or tried to be repaired? However, if everything is looking good and the ladder sits level, we are good to use it. Hopefully, you will have a ladder inspection checklist that will be completed. The frequency of this checklist will be determined by either your employer or the prime contractor. But even if you don't have a checklist or it isn't time to complete one, you should still do an inspection pre-use to ensure you will be using a safe ladder. If any defects are found, remove the ladder from service with a lockout tagout and inform your supervisor or employer. So now we know the ladder is safe to use, but how do we climb this thing with our hands full of tools and boxes of stuff? 
We knew we need to maintain three points of contact while we climb up and down the ladder. So the challenge is doing this safely. Depending on the tools, we may try to wrap the cord in such a way on our arm that we can hang it. But this can be a hazard as the tool may get caught or tangled as we climb up or down the ladder. So a safer way is to have a tool belt or a pouch that we can attach our tools to or use a pail with a rope that we can hoist the materials up. This will free up our hands and not damage the tools if they contact the rails of the ladder like might happen if they hang off our arm. Tool pouches also allow us to take up screws, nails, bolts, etc. to complete the task and not worry about a box which may drop and cause a mess on the floor. Maintaining three-point contact is key to having a proper balance and security while we climb and descend. Two hands and one foot, or one hand and two feet. Maintaining a good grip and solid footing will keep us safer. Knock off any excess mud, snow, or other debris before climbing or descending to ensure that your footing is good. One trend that we see in construction is the improper use of a stepladder. This improper use falls into several different categories, so let's explore some of them. One of the bad things to do is like this, a folded stepladder leaning on a wall. It's quick, it's easy, and in some cases, very convenient. However, it's unsafe. The footing of this ladder is pre-cut to match that of a flat floor surface. The manufacturer has designed this footing as to maximize the contact with the surface to prevent slippage of the ladder. As we can see here, there is minimal contact with the footing with the floor. The ladder is not designed to be used in this manner. It should be carefully opened and fully opened so the spreader bars are locked and put into place. Another improper use is overreaching. A good rule of thumb is to keep yourself centered on the ladder. If your work task requires you to reach beyond half of your arm length, it's too far. Let me show you what I mean. Workers should try to keep as close to the ladder as possible. If their arms are reaching like this, it may require the ladder to be moved. Try to keep the workspace in a 90 degree scope, kind of like this. But one of the biggest improper uses, how do we climb these things? In order to maintain proper balance while doing work, we should never stand above the third top rung even if it's for a very quick one minute job. If you stand above this third top rung, you are not able to rest your legs on enough of the ladder to be safe. Some ladders may have a sticker on this stating termination or do not stand above here. If you need to get higher to do your task, get a taller ladder that will still fit in the space that you are working within. Extension ladders are not designed to be a working platform. They are a source of access and egress where other means of getting to that working level are not feasible. Now we all know this is not always the case and people do conduct work off of extension ladders. But if you can, you should try to complete that task in a different working platform like a step ladder, an area lift, or possibly even scaffolding. When workers are using an extension ladder to get to that working surface, it should be secured at the top and or the bottom. By securing at the top, we are preventing that side-to-side movement. And by securing at the bottom, we are preventing it from kicking out. Sometimes, depending on the ladder surface, it may be uneven dirt, it may need to be shimmed on one side, and help keep it squared if level. If this is done, workers definitely need to anchor it to prevent movement or slippage. As with a step ladder, your extension ladder must also be inspected pre-use to ensure that it is safe. Here are some of the things to look for. The foot pads. Are they in good condition and rotate as needed? The side rails. Are they free of cracks and dents? The gravity rung locks. Do they latch and freely swing as the ladder is being extended or retracted? The rope assembly. Are the pulleys in good condition? Is the rope free of frays and cuts? The slide guides. Are they free of debris and dents that may prevent the ladder from being extended or retracted? And the top or the end caps, they should be in place and free of damage. When an extension ladder is properly set up, it should be a 4 to 1 ratio, or approximately 76 degrees. 4 to 1 means for every 4 feet up, 
the bottom is one foot away from the structure. Kickout is what happens when the ladder is not properly set up or the worker goes too high on it. The higher the worker goes, the more gravitational force is applied, so the rubber pads on the feet need to be flat and secured to prevent this from happening. If the extension ladder is equipped with teeth on the bottom and the ladder is used on a soft surface like grass or mud, the rubber foot pads can be rotated and the teeth stomped into the ground for support. This does not mean your ladder is 100% secured though. You should still anchor the top to prevent sideways movement. These ladders should also have three rungs above the access point at the highest part in order to give the workers proper support while getting on or off the ladder. In absence of doing the three rungs above, you can do like this and have hand grabs as an accessory add-on. This will assist in maintaining three-point contact as you get on or off the ladder as well. As the ladders are extended, be sure that gravity locks work and engage on the rungs properly. If not, you are at risk of the ladder sliding down as you begin to climb. This could result in a serious injury happening. Most taller ladders will have a rope system that we can use to lengthen and shorten them. Extension ladders can reach heights of 60 feet. As stated in the Manitoba Regulation Part 13.14, an extension ladder that is 14.6 meters in length must have two sections, and a ladder that is 20 meters in length must have more than two sections. The overlap of the rungs, well extended, must also be 1 meter for a ladder shorter than 11 meters, 1.25 meters for a ladder that is between 11 meters and 15 meters, and 1.5 meters for a ladder that is longer than 15 meters. All ladders, extension and step, will come in either aluminum or fiberglass. Be sure that you select the correct ladder material for the scope of work that you are doing. As an electrician, you will not want to use an aluminum ladder for obvious reasons. The same theory may come into play for some of the on-site welders as well. But also, be aware of the manufacturer's stickers that are on the rails of the ladders. These stickers will give the user information about that specific ladder, such as weight loads, task warnings, setup and usage requirements. If your ladder does not have these stickers, inform your supervisor and order new ones from the manufacturer. Believe it or not, for fiberglass ladders, each color represents a maximum weight load. The weight load is the entire weight that will be put upon the ladder. Try to factor in the tools, the equipment, as well as the worker's weight. Let's briefly discuss fixed ladders which are not ladders that were previously defective and then repaired. These are ladders that are permanently attached to the buildings. Now, depending on the size of these ladders, there may or may not be extra safety features on them. As outlined in the Manitoba Regulation Part 13.20, some will have a cage on them, while others may have a lifeline. Now, this may be a center lifeline, as we see here, or it may be a self-retracting lanyard attached to the top. For each type of lifeline, the worker will need a different type of harness. If there is a center lifeline, you will need a positional harness with a D-ring in the middle area to attach to. A regular harness with a D-ring over the back, trying to run the lanyard over the front and attach to this is an incident waiting to happen. If a worker slips off the rungs, this cable guide will lock into position and stop the worker from a fall. So if the worker is wearing the wrong harness, they may fall further down, get twisted around, and receive unnecessary injuries. Ladder cages will help keep the worker within the ladder space. It also acts as a bit of a rest area for you to rest your back on. However, if a fixed ladder exceeds 9 meters in length, an actual rest platform must be available at that 9 meter mark and then every 5 meters after that. As with the other ladders already discussed, there is a pre-use inspection that should take place on these as well. Generally, these are exterior ladders and are exposed to the harsh elements of heat, cold, rain and snow. There is a chance 
that some rust or cracking may occur. Even if the fixed ladder is indoor and access to a roof hatch, for example, it should still be inspected to ensure that it is safe to use. Let's take a look at some of the pre-use inspections that you should be looking at. First off, the safety gate, if it is equipped. Make sure that everything is locked and it'll open as required. Taking a look at the loose or worn side rungs and the rails. We're also looking at any sort of cages that may be equipped. We're looking at the anchor bolts to make sure that those are secure and not rusted out. Looking at the lifeline, which should have an inspection tag on it as well, and make sure that everything slides as it should and lock as it should. Because this is accessing an interior roof hatch, we want to make sure that it is weather tight and there's no ice or snow or mud buildup on these so we won't slip as we use it. When using fixed ladders, never carry anything in your hands. This is critical for maintaining three points of contact. Use a hoist or a rope to bring your materials up to your working surface. We have given you lots of information today regarding some of the basics for working safely on different ladders. So to summarize it all up, identify the hazards of your task, which will include working on or using your ladders. The best way to identify these hazards is through your hazard assessment and pre-use checklists. Now you can communicate those hazards that you are working off of. Put up a sign, a barricaded area, or something that protects others from bumping into your ladder. Once you've identified those hazards, you must now control them give you a safe work area. If your ladder is defective, lock it out, report it to your supervisor or the employer. Be sure to check out CSAM's virtual toolbox talks available from our website or our YouTube channel. CSAM is also on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Come check us out and stay up to date with safety related information or even just general industry things that we share. Don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or concerns. And until next time, stay safe out there.